Hey everyone, welcome back to Twilight Princess 3 Heart Run. This is Itagushi. This is Double Snap a lot. And, uh. Quash is totally a word. I guess. I don't know. He just taught. I wish we were recording that conversation. He's Gushi. He just... <laughs> just taught me that Quash is a word. Because yeah. it's on a magic card. That end, you know, it's on pieces of paper that aren't magic cards. Like the dictionary? Maybe. I wish we were recording that conversation, though. I thought we were. We weren't. Oh. Because it was, I, it was saving the last commentary oh. thing. Oh. Oh well. That's the only reason. Uh, basically we were talking about how last time we were over at a friend's house, he's a big Halo fan, I guess you would call it. So we played a little bit of Halo Reach, and uh, you kept using the, uh, what's the normal, what's, what's the regular thing called? The thing basically where you just stop moving and just a shield, just like a U-shaped shield happens. Yeah, and it's, then... It's not the drop shield where you can, you know, just drop down your honeycomb shield and nope, run around. you have to do an elaborate, like, dance first so that it can't be, like, an instantaneous thing. And then you can't do anything, and they can just walk up to you and get ready to assassinate you as soon as it's off. <laughs> yeah. Um... I'll, but, look, I'll, I'll look it up, see what it's called, but we called it Metapod Power, because that's basically what it is. You harden. You, you cannot move, but you're... Your defense increases a lot. Until, except unlike Metapod, it doesn't last after you harden. Yeah, but unlike Metapod, it completely protects you and makes you invulnerable. Whereas, well, it depends. In the anime, when Metapod harden, it turn them invincible. But in the games, it just increases defense by a tiny bit. Yeah, so he kept coming at me with vehicles, though. Which <laughs> is like the one situation when it's good. <laughs> And then you can just harden in front of them, and they crash and die. Over and over and over and over again. Just like... Because that was on that huge map. The one yeah. Where, like, it's just a giant map, and they only put like three weapon drops in it. Yeah, and... So you can't find a fucking weapon. So I was running around like upstairs trying to find a rocket launcher, because I guess we turned that mode on. Just all the rocket launchers and stuff. And... So just every, like, five minutes that I was looking for guns, I would hear our friend go, Damn it! Or something like that. Because <laughs> he had once again tried to run over Doppel Snap a lot, and he basically just turned on his Metapod power. I got, like, some kind of rampage on that. <laughs> I don't know, what do they call a bajillion wins in a row in that game? Uh, there's, I don't know, there's weird things, like there's kill streak, and I don't even know if that's one, but then they also have... Killionaire and Kilimanjaro. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm, the Master Sword is glowing now. That's kind so of so I tried to justify what he was doing, just by saying, you know, sometimes like I do the same thing where someone will have a tank, and I'll just try and take him on foot over and over again, dying over and over again, when there's like a perfectly good another tank. <laughs> Just to validate the fact that you're running out of tank on foot to begin with? Yeah. And I said, it's not the same thing. <laughs> because if he's in a giant tank on your on foot, and you actually succeed and validate yourself, you're like, yay! And it's awesome because you're the tiny guy and no one expects you to win. Whereas if he's in the vehicle and you're just on foot, and he keeps running at you and dying... Congratulations, you defaulted. Yeah, the one time that he does manage to kill you with it, it's just like, you know... That's not exciting, because that's what normally happens. Oh, but spe no. Speaking of stuff like that, that reminds me. Um, I'm going to talk about the game for a minute now. Aww, this, we almost finished that conversation we had change. before. There's more to it? Yeah, about the Empire. Okay, go ahead and go with The that. whole Empire mentality, where if you are the evil, if you do have this huge force against a small force, you do have to go against that small guy that keeps getting away, because he is the symbol. You gotta try and kill Luke Skywalker and the Jedi with your Death Star. And your exact words were? Something about Quash. The last symbol of you hope. You have to Quash their last symbol of hope. The last symbol of hope that must be quashed. And that's how we got on top of the word Quash. Which is a magic card. So, I'm gonna talk about Twilight Princess Can't for just like... Can't target source your instant. Will you shut up? <laughs> I'm gonna talk... <laughs> and your moves up to three... Other copies of it from their graveyard hand and library from the game. God damn it. Alright, go. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna talk about Twilight Princess for like 30 seconds and then we're gonna go off on another tangent. Um, 
Master Sword is glowing now. Because it's all, it's got superpowers now. Oh, I never noticed how there's little bits of glow flowing off of it. Yeah, and now it basically one-shots anything in this dungeon except for the, except for the, um, the boss. So that's kind of cool. Um, I think that's all I really wanted to... Oh, also it, it makes switches go. Like, you'll see these black balls over here. You hit them, they turn on, and then you make platforms. Yeah, this part of the dungeon is pretty self-explanatory. So the other thing I was going to talk about is a minute to win it, <laughs> just because there's nothing <laughs> else to talk about. Um, I don't like that show. It, I don't hate it as much as I hate Deal or No Deal, but I, I can't. I tried giving Minute to Win it a chance. It's got, it's an interesting concept, but it takes itself way too seriously. For one, that music that I play, I mean, I guess, I'm not going to complain about that too much, because they could just be going, oh, it's funny because it's super dramatic music with epic choirs and whatnot when they're just, you know, shooting, bouncing quarters into a, a jug of water. So, I mean, I'll, I'll let that slide. Um, but every single time they have a contestant, they have to have some crazy elaborate sob story. And they can't just have normal people. They have to have people... Like, I think one of the first times I watched it was when they were doing the couples thing. And, uh, I forgot what exactly she did. But the guy, his dad was in the hospital recovering from cancer. And they actually stopped the show so he could call from the hospital. Now, I'm not being, you know, insensitive. I know that, you know, cancer's kind of a big deal. Because my mom has it. Or had it. She's actually recovering. But I don't. Just, they made it such a big deal, and everyone in the studio was crying. And at first, I was like, "Okay, this is." I mean, I guess this is. You know, it's kind of emotional. But then every single time I watched after that, everyone has a sob story, and it gets kind of annoying, frankly. Um, what if every time you watched Animaniacs, they took a break to tell you about how important? It was to raise awareness of breast cancer. Breast cancer's awareness is great. It's just y you want to watch some Animaniacs. <laughs> but um, I think this. And by the way, not only do they have to have a sob story, they have to look pretty. <laughs> they will not let ugly people on that show. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons why Jeopardy is one of my favorite game shows. Because it's entirely based on be you being good at it. Exactly. Like, um, Wheel of Fortune's alright, too. I know Wheel of Fortune selects contestants based almost entirely on, you know, how entertaining they are. But that's okay, because they don't need to have a soft story. I mean, people, they want their contestants to be entertaining. So that I don't mind. But Jeopardy is almost entirely based on how good you are at the game. And, um, there's this... Because they've had some really awkward people on there. And they've had some f ugly ones, too. But... Like us. <laughs> I wish I was on Jeopardy. I tried out one. But there was this one guy on Jeopardy, I think it was like 99 or something like that. His name was Eddie Tamanis. And he was blind. And he actually, you know, defied the odds and managed to become a five-time champion back when that meant that he had to retire. He basically won five games. They're like, good job, you won five games. You're done now. You'll come back for the Tournament of Champions. And, um... They didn't really give him any advantages either, basically what they did was they gave him a little card with braille on it, telling him what the categories were. And they only gave that to him before the game, during the game he didn't have it. And then I think this, the last three games he was on, I think they played a tone to let him know when he could ring in. But he was, he was blind. And despite, oh and they also gave him like a little keyboard to type on type his name and then to type in uh, Final Jeopardy. Um, just an aside, it's funny how the aside is thing that's actually happening in the game. This is kind of a maze, if you follow this set of platforms that I jump on, you'll get to the end. So anyway, this is, it's a blind guy, he succeeded, did very well despite all of the odds against him. And it was legitimately, you know, inspiring and emotional. And it was inspiring because it didn't happen every fucking week. 
In fact, I don't think anything's happened like that since then. You know what, Shaw was good that had stuff like that every single week. The Amazing Race. I wouldn't... That's... I mean, like, I, here's I, the thing. I agree with you, it's a great show, but I, I, I don't think it's the same thing. It's kind of similar in some ways, but it's different in other ways, because first, it's a lot more serious than shooting ping pong balls out of your mouth. And... It's... They actually are overcoming something by being there. It's not like, hey, you have feelings. That's something to overcome while you shoot your quarters. <laughs> it's like, hey, you actually have no legs, and it's awesome that you can do this, and you're she, good at it. She had a leg. She had one of them. She had one of them. And also, like, they're, you got to see them enough that they were actual people to you, and not just kind of symbols of compassion. You got a full person, which people really are. Right. I do like. I haven't watched the last couple of seasons. I think I watched like the first. What are they on now? On like 17 or something? I watched the first 15, I think. But I, I did enjoy that show. That's a good show. I think another reason that show is good is partially being eliminated isn't based on a popularity contest. You, if you get eliminated, it's because you suck, and uh, or you get unlucky, and yeah. then you'll go back on their on their redemption season that they're doing now. Cool. Where like if you if there's one thing that you were really unlucky with and it results in you getting eliminated, uh, you can be on that season now. And then another thing is, it never really asked its contestants to debase themselves. Yeah. It was never. You can get the million dollars, but you have to run around naked and eat bull testicles. They got into that minor sometimes, but... Well, like, they'll have, like, one of those maybe once a race. It wasn't the point of the show. Exactly. Here's the part where they throw a bunch of these monsters at you. I don't actually know if you need to kill them all at once like all the other ones, but... <laughs> Why it, not? It, it doesn't matter, because it's easy. But next video, Zant. Maybe we'll talk about him. Maybe. See you guys next time. Yeah. <laughs>